so if if someone were to try, and, and let's let's be very clear this was done in mice there have been right. have there been any human studies of such a diet a ketogenic diet um for people with diabetes who have these complications well there have been uh studies in people with diabetes uh, that have been on the ketogenic diet and uh and I, I, I guess I should say, not surprisingly, their diabetes often resolves quite robustly. So uh, there's there's different a few studies out there. They're kind of pilot studies, but they're, they're pretty impressive that uh, um, that that there's something like well, a very high it depends on the study, but a very high percentage of diabetic patients that go on a ketogenic diet, their diabetes uh, is greatly improved, and many of them actually don't even have to stay uh, don't have to take medicine anymore. Uh, and I have been told by uh, at least one clinician that he has a, a few patients that have been on this diet for as long as, for over four years, yeah. uh, and, he, and he says it's not that hard to do. I'm, you know, I've never tried. I've never gone on the ketogenic diet myself. I probably right. should try it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so sort yes, there are definitely. However, to my knowledge, there have been no studies. Uh, Looking at the actual complications of diabetes, for example, to my knowledge, nobody has been nobody with diabetic nephropathy has been put on a ketogenic diet. Right. Yeah, I know uh, Dr. Eric Westman at Duke is doing a lot. That's of, the one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and Dr. Mary Vernon at the University of Kansas. So there there are uh, clinicians out there who are using this as a therapeutic approach for diabetes. But I would love to see somebody take your study and try to apply it to humans to see what the results would be, because I think that's just the logical next step. It um, sure is. I, I completely agree. Uh, although, uh, you know, if you've, if you've read some of the way this story has been covered, um, of course, they, they often get, um, they, you know, they, they often will get other investigators not involved in the investigation to comment. And the general comment is, very commonly, uh, well, yeah, but this is mice, you know. We, we, first we have to yeah. do it in humans, so, you know. And that's fine. It's a fairly uh, reasonable point. Uh, actually, uh, one of the people from the JDRF who paid for this study, Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, made the point, which, uh, which I think is perhaps more, more to the point, which is, you know, we, we really first need to understand a little bit more about how this diet is working. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of possibility. I had some trouble getting this, uh, this, paper published because uh, every reviewer had his own theory or her theory about how this diet was working uh, and uh, nobody uh, basically the general feeling was well until we know how it's working it's not worth publishing so yeah. I, of course I, I found that quite annoying <laughs> here we have done something that nobody had ever done before which is to reverse a diabetic complication and uh, they didn't want to publish that at all until we knew how it worked well anyway we think we know how it works right by blocking glucose metabolism but there are some other possibilities. A low protein diet is known to be somewhat protective uh, in kidney disease. Some other hypotheses that have been uh, brought up are maybe it's the maybe it's just the redu reduction of the, of the blood glucose because we didn't really do a control where we let's say gave the animals uh, beta cell transplants or something to correct their blood glucose. Yeah. So we don't know if it's beyond if the effect is more than just the fact that we reduce blood glucose. So which of course. I mean, from a from a clinical perspective, it's like, well, who cares as long as it works? Uh, but I guess there is some feel, and I understand that there's some feeling out there that we really want to know how this works a little bit more before we start clinical trials. And and I I totally agree with that. Uh, one of the biggest questions for me is this business about uh, whether whether we're re really resetting the clock. So that means. Can, is it the case that we could just temporarily put the mice on the diet, let's say for two weeks instead of two months, and then take them back, put them back on a regular diet, and see if we really have set, reset the clock so that they even even when we put them back on a regular diet, they still have no protein in the urine, yeah. uh, and that it would take a long time to develop protein in the urine. So that's a that's a major question in my mind because uh, that. If that's true, that totally changes the way we would do the clinical trials, right? Sure. Uh, so, uh, so there's a lot of things we'd like to know, uh, you know, about it. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, well, we're trying to get funding to do that. Let, let's just leave it at that. Well, uh, th this is the kind of thing that I have to tell you that um, that a lot of scientists really don't like very much because. Right. It's, uh, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, sure, we're saving millions of lives, but, uh, you know, it's not really basic research, so, uh, you know, why should we support it? Well, and I you, don't mean And you can't, make, you can't make a drug out of it. 
And so yeah, that's right. there's exactly. no money to be made uh, pushing yeah. a dietary uh, cure for something that they're making a whole lot of money off of right now. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I, there's some, there, there is some truth to what you say. In other words, yeah, there's not a whole lot of incentive for a drug company, for example, to, to do a clinical trial along these lines. Um, although, if, if we're right about how it's working, there, there, there would be some rationale to develop, let's say, um, ketone derivatives that uh, might be usable as uh, let's say, dietary supplement. But we tried to just give ketones alone, like the main ketone is 3-beta-hydroxybutyrate. And uh, the body uh, metabolizes ketones so quickly, we just could not develop a way to administer ketones either through mini pumps or in the diet uh, that would uh, sufficiently increase uh, ketones to the level that we needed to be uh, relative to what we get with the ketogenic diet. So, um, you know, but, but Still, there there certainly should be some possibility of doing that by the drug companies, and you know, and actually, some people are working on that. But it it kind of I'm sure you have encountered this. The the whole field has a kind of a a, a faintly um, how can I put this uh, somewhat disreputable reputation, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, that's because you know there's a lot of popular treatment of low carb diets and so on that a lot of people you know don't take very seriously so you know it's uh it's definitely something that uh i i have encountered a lot you know there's, there's just this feeling about it that it's just uh and i and i have to tell you this is not my you might say this is not really my day job you know i mean my day job is the basic mechanisms of, of metabolism which i'm very well known for uh, but once I started getting into this business, uh, you know, I noted very quickly that there's just not a lot of interest in it from the point of view of the funding agencies. Well, and you alluded to it earlier with uh, saying that you had trouble getting this study even published. That's and right. I, I think it's just that basic uh, mindset by these people that are running the journals saying, hey, we don't care a bit in the world. If you start talking about ketone bodies, we're not there. Sorry. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I don't want, I don't, I, you know, but I, I guess my, I don't want to, you know, I mean, obviously we, we did get it published and that's fine, but, yep. uh, but I, I think my objection, and, but what can I say is, uh, they, they really don't seem that, I mean, I'm not sure what it, the whole problem. Partly, yes, I think there's a, a kind of a, a mindset, a prejudice mindset about the whole low carb thing. Uh, and also, because there are some, there's a lot of irresponsible talk uh, along those lines, and I understand that. Uh, but also, you know, there seems to be a lot less interest in curing disease than there is in understanding how the disease works, to mm -hmm. tell you the truth. Yeah. And uh, it just kind of annoys me. But I'm a kind of a minority position that way. As a basic researcher, I think our job is to cure disease. And believe it or not, a lot of my fellow scientists don't really think that. Mm -hmm. They think that their job is to develop basic, you know, basic understanding. So kind of a philosophical difference, I guess. Yeah. Now, we never did talk about what the diet actually looks like. If somebody's going to eat an 87% fat diet, uh, what did you feed these mice to get them to that level? Yeah, well, uh, the, I mean, we, uh, the diet, we actually bought the diet from a, a company that makes different kinds of diets for mice. And this, this is a commercially available diet, and it's actually been, uh, been available for many years to study uh, epilepsy. So, mm -hmm. because, because the truth, you know, as you know, a ketogenic diet is famously very effective to treat epilepsy. It uh, kind of went out of fashion in the 70s uh, because of, uh, you know, there, there were drugs that people could use. But it now has kind of made a comeback for certain kinds of uh, refractory cases, especially in children. Uh, but still not widely used, but, but used enough to know that it's safe and effective for epilepsy. But one of the big issues is nobody really knows how it works in epilepsy. It clearly does work, but actually the mechanism is very unclear. Uh, the current thinking is, uh, I, I think, that, that yes, it's working by blocking glucose metabolism in the brain, but why that should you know, be so effective in treating epilepsy uh, without actually causing, let's say, other problems. Uh, nobody really understands that. So scientists have been studying the, epi the ketogenic diet and its effect on epilepsy for many years. Uh, and so it's available uh, from this company. So basically, so we, that, that's what we 
because we we actually initially tried an Atkins type formulation, as I indicated, which we cr- kind of created ourselves, but it turned out not to be ketogenic, in mice at least. Anyhow, so uh, what it, the form of, when you get it, it's kind of uh, pretty disgusting. It's pretty much like lard. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, so, uh, and, and it's kind of, uh, and as a matter of fact, it, it actually was a bit of a challenge for me to figure out how to administer uh, this diet to uh, my mice, because uh, we obviously wanted to be able to monitor how much they were eating, and because it's lard, uh, you know, it has the consistency of lard. Uh, uh, basically, it's like this kind of, well, you know, sort of waxy material. And we, if we just put it into a regular bowl uh, that normally, let's say, they would normally eat from, they make a mess of it. It's just like they spread it all over the place, and they get all, you know, it's, their coats get all greasy and everything. So for a while, I was just wandering the streets trying to figure out a way. To 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 get to make this diet accessible to them without them making a complete mess of it, and we couldn't monitor how much they were eating. And I finally, uh, the big breakthrough came when I was uh, and I was I was actually just looking for some kind of bowl like thing that we could use to administer the diet. And finally, I found what I was looking for in a Pier One uh, uh, store of all things, and it was a, it's actually like a little incense. Uh, holder and the way that it works is that uh, it's like a regular bowl on the bottom but then it has a kind of a a top to it that has just like a little hole in it and that's to let the incense come out but you can take the top comes on and off and so what we so i realized that was that would work for us because then what we did is we put the diet into the bowl and then in order to eat it the mice had to actually stick their nose into this hole at the in the top of it and so they can they can sort of eat eat it from the bowl, but they can't spread it all over the place. And so once we started using those bowls, then, then we were able to, to do the study. So uh, anyway, so it is kind of a mess. It, it, I think some of, the, uh, some of the articles that have been written about it have talked about different ways the ketogenic diet is formulated, but it's kind of along the lines of very thick milkshakes, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yes, you could do it like eggs, lots of butter, you know, that kind of thing, lots lots of cooking oil. Uh, so uh, that can be done, but certainly, you know, obviously I don't recommend anybody do this uh, on their own. Um, I'm not sure how many doctors I, I would probably freak. be willing to facilitate this kind of diet. Uh, they would and, freak and for, out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. I mean, and, and I think that is absolutely misguided. Uh, yeah. But as you know, I'm sure, given your interest in low carb diets, you know that there is a, in my opinion, a completely uh, irrational fear of high fat diets. Sure. Uh, and uh, so, you know, so yeah, that's that's an issue. But anyway, so that's kind of what it's like. I, you know, I, as I say, I, I absolutely cannot recommend this uh, for people, you know, who let's say who have diabetic kidney disease until we, you know, know more about it. But but certainly the ketogenic diet is commercially available for people who, who have epilepsy. Well, and you certainly make a compelling argument for the reversal of the conditions that are brought on from, from diabetes for people to at least know and have it on their radar screen that, hey, you know, everything else is not really helping me right now. Maybe this ketogenic diet, maybe there's something to it. So definitely the work you're doing, Dr. Mobs, is, uh, is helping people at least rethink that there are maybe nutritional answers to this issue that's very serious uh, for millions upon millions of uh, Americans dealing with diabetes right now. So thank you very much. Yes, that's true. Well, thank you.